gotta be gold. Yeah, I wonder how old this cabin is. Okay, so here we go. It is day six of my trip. I have about 190 kilometers left to go to Taco Bar, which is the LZ landing zone on the Peel River and 177 kilometers left of the Bonnet Plume. Um, so to finish the Bonnet Plume, I have about 40 clicks I have to do per day, but I'm feeling pretty good about that considering the current strong and I don't think there's any portages in front of me. First thing this morning, uh, I got the fire going. I got my pot on to boil. Gonna do breakfast, you know, my coffee, my oatmeal meal and what have you and uh, if I have time I might hike up this creek a little bit there's a really cool canyon not too far up that way and uh, uh, pan for gold a little bit hopefully I can still bang off my 40k today if I do that I just got my eye on the pot looks a tad precarious on top of the fire right there okay well uh, the bugs are pretty bad this morning they're dying off a bit now but I was literally getting swarmed so I busted out my Thermosal EX90 I mean this thing is pretty rugged it's built for the toughest mosquito swarmed environment imaginable and uh, it just runs off um, this little cartridge here so highly effective at getting rid of mosquitoes and it just creates kind of a zone around you of uh, bug free wonderment and uh, you just press that button, um, it turns on, it runs off battery, so uh, it's got a nine hour battery life, which is pretty good, and that little cartridge will last for 12 hours, so you just bring a little, uh, um, a little anchor battery, recharge it off that. I like the little uh, lanyard that it hangs onto as well, so I just have that going while I'm taking down my tent and doing some camp chores. This river, the Bonnet Plume, is um, rarely traveled. So there's no other groups in front of me. There's no other groups behind me. I may be one of the only people to do it this year, if not the only person, potentially. I don't know why, maybe it's just because of the portaging, but comparatively to a lot of trips I've done, it's not really all that bad. If water levels were normal, there'd potentially be very little portaging, maybe only one portage. It's literally kind of amazing to think that I have this entire wilderness to myself, like I'm the only person out here for hundreds if not thousands of square miles. What a place to have a coffee. My God, I just, I don't know which campsite's been the best. They've just all been incredible. This one's just great because it's open. That's actually, you know, you're camping right on actual dirt here. You get, get your pegs in easily. It's flat enough. But then yesterday was amazing. It wasn't broad open, but it was more intimate in the bush. Those mountains just came right up out of the other side of the river and there's just cliffs and huge peaks just right in your face. The kind of place where you'd be likely to see some dull sheep or whatever. So 
And then the one spot that was at the head of the rapid wasn't ideal. I got there late, but then I found that caribou antler and I saw a caribou there. Pretty cool. I'm really uh, not taking it so fast today. I didn't get to bed till 1 a.m. last night. And um, that's the problem. Sometimes you want to push late, but then what's the point when you, your following day is a slow start? I was going to get up at 6, and then I saw at 6.30. Well, I ended up getting up at like 7.30 and like sort of crawling out of the tent around quarter to 8. You know what I mean? Like, just so exhausted and sore and everything, right? Like, I probably should have just gotten up. When me and Ted were in Manitoba, we put in back-to-back 12-hour -back days and slept four, four hours in between. And man, that was hard to get up. So I, I know I have it in me, but unless I, I really have that anxiety that it's 100% mandatory, it's tough for me to do. Well, nice clear water tributary and a decent enough eddy. I figured there'd be some fish here, but anyways, they're not biting. I took a few casts last night and no luck. Um, could be that the, the tributaries that are more fanned out like this, uh, there's less chance of uh, you know insects falling in them. The ones that just come straight out of the bush might be better, but I don't know, that's just a guess, so. Anything that sticks out really is just a place that's going to be easy to uh, to dip my pan in and get a bunch of uh, the smaller sediment. Um, you know, I'm looking for like black sand as an indicator. Um, something like a, a deposit of black sand would be a good place to pan in and around. Um, tried a couple of spots already. Uh, but nothing, nothing panned out. No luck yet. I don't have a ton of time and it's making me wonder if it's worth continuing up this creek much because I've already spent a good amount of time just kind of panning the lower part, but I think I'm still going to head for that canyon. Hey bear! Cutting through a little thicket here. Oh, there's an open channel. Hopefully this brings me out to a good spot. Beautiful in here though, this is awesome. I'm glad I just, just alone for the little trek is worth it. Explore some country off of the river. Wow. I think I see something in here, guys. I think I, got, I, think I might have got something. Look at that. That's gotta be gold. Like, it's got a weight to it. It's heavy. It looks pretty like banged up from being in the creek. It's not all smooth. Right at the bottom, I just sift the whole pan through and I just found a freaking gold nugget. <laughs> yeah! 
I'm gonna give this to my wife Tori when I get home. This is like the coolest souvenir ever from the Yukon, man. Totally worth putting myself way behind schedule on doing this hike today. And now I'm gonna have to try more. Well, that is going in a bag, in a bag, in my waterproof backpack in the safest possible place imaginable. Well, I just can't imagine a cooler feeling than that. Continuing to pan and to pan and to pan and nothing, 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 and just thinking like, oh, I'm just here fooling around. Like it's your total needle in a haystack. And then to just wash a whole bunch of sand and gravel and pebbles out of your tray and all of a sudden catch a glimpse of this shiny yellow metal in there and then actually have it be gold is just like, insane like i see the draw i see why people want to do this just to be out here experiencing this country and panning the creeks and finding gold like that is just the coolest thing ever like just these wild surroundings and i don't know man it's just i guess it's part of the legacy of the yukon but uh and and the west in general but like what an amazing experience so i'm probably going to try two or three more spots and then uh maybe head up the canyon a bit and then just pick my way back to uh, my canoe and head on my way. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to try another, uh, panning another creek before the trip's over, that's for sure. I suppose this is like a dry part of the creek bed. It could be gold all through here. Well, back with my gear now. I was probably up in there panning the creek for over three hours anyway, so definitely cut into my day. I'm a little concerned since I have to do over 40 clicks. But uh, yeah, better load my boat quickly and uh, get on the river, but super cool experience for sure. Just the hike and just uh, looking for spots and actually finding a little bit of gold is super, super neat, so really glad i took the time to do that arguably even if i miss my flights and have to repay for my float plane flight etc um, <laughs> maybe not that but still it was a darn good experience Finally push it off now, well into the afternoon, but what can I say, gold fever got the best of me. And we're off! I'm going to call this campsite Solid Gold, after a strip bar in Sudbury. Well, it's going to be a lot of paddling today. I don't have any contour lines crossing the river in the next... Uh, 20 kilometers however there's a lot of braids and braids can create really tight turns uh, which can create some interesting current sometimes so you gotta be on your toes a swing bridge that tells me that uh, there might be a, a, an old remote uh, prospecting camp around here. Funny that I just found gold in this area. I wouldn't doubt if I walked up this creek I could find uh, just a remote fly-in uh, prospecting camp and that's who put in this swing bridge just basically so they can get to the other side of the river. Very simple construction just cables and a little basket and you just pull yourself across and the, the, hang, the things hanging on it are for just to warn any aircraft potentially so people can see it. Very interesting looking river with all the floodplains. Should be stopping to fish here. Wow, this is so epic. Right now I see what look like uh, sheep. One, two, three, four. A 
up on the side of the mountain there. That's a neat, uh, neat thing to see so far away, but uh, definitely saw them moving, so dull sheep. They're, they grow big horns, just kind of like very similar to a big horn sheep, except they're white. Looks like just bits of ice still on it or something. Maybe it's not a spring. Maybe that's just ice remaining in the frozen creek from the snow runoff there. Anyways, I might stop at the mouth and fill my water bottles because I have no problem drinking that. Oh yeah, no, it's a waterfall. There's like a natural spring that's just bursting out of the side of the mountain. It looks like, you know, obviously at times it's fed with snow runoff too, but it just bursts out of the side of the mountain out of nowhere and then tumbles down this long skinny waterfall and then disappears into a pile of rocks. It's making me really thirsty just looking at it actually. fishing hole. So I couldn't resist but to pull over and take a couple of casts. Maybe they just aren't biting. I bet you there's a few in here though. I did notice them feeding off the surface too, so I might switch it back up, but uh, anyways, I caught three off of this yesterday, so. in some sort of a side braid here going through a heavily braided section I looked up there's a dull sheep not far away but right in the uh, steep jagged sort of rocky part of a mountaintop there at the river's edge and uh, it was kind of interested in me and I was pulled out my camera and got a shot of it but then I got all bumpy because I, I started washing down the side of a rapid and uh, over a gravel bar and sure enough I went around the corner and it stuck its head around and looked at me it was curious about what I, I was exactly it probably has never seen a person before so that was pretty neat because um, oftentimes you see them from so far away way up on the mountaintop but to see one from close was pretty special so cool animal sighting for sure tracks are these mountain goat sheep these small dull sheep I pulled over and wanted to see if I could walk back up but looks like uh, 
This braid here is too deep for me to walk across. actually hoping I could walk into this lake um, and fish in it but I just don't have time I was thinking it was I was saying day six it's actually day seven which means just to make it to the mouth I have 45 kilometers a day to paddle every day not counting the 15 to 20 I have to do on the peel to make it to my pickup location so yeah I definitely don't have time to hike into this lake Well, fun little fly fishing stop there at Fairchild Creek. It comes out of Fairchild Lake anyways, which is a, a large uh, lake just in the bush here. Mountains on either side. I wanted to go in there, but just doing a little math, I have to make it about 47 kilometers a day. If I make it another 12K today, I have 47 just to finish the bonnet plume, not even counting the peel. So, unfortunately, now I think that's doable. And it's got to get on the river earlier. If there's no more portages in swift current like this, it's doable. It just means I don't have time to hike, you know, over a mile into another lake and fish there for a couple hours, you know? I just feel a, a, a little more rushed than I'd like to be. And I know I can blame not getting out on this trip as early as I'd wanted to because of reasons outside of my hands and then just the high water again outside of my hands and um, you know me having to portage uh, a lot of stuff that I would have run if the water levels were typical for this time of year so but uh, that's okay having an absolute blast out here um, I mean, I'm just pulling over and recreationally fishing for Arctic grayling and catching them in honestly not even a clear water tributary, pretty turbid water. And even some of the, you know, you don't have to be in a clear water tributary. It's definitely better, but this river is not so heavily silted that there's not the odd one in just, uh, you know, a random eddy either. Oh, cool. An old cabin. Whoa. I gotta pull over and stop and see that. I wonder if that's old man Fairchild's cabin. Uh, now I gotta stop and see the cabin. God, I'm never gonna get anywhere. Well, I just pulled over because I stopped at the mouth of Fairchild Creek and uh, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted a really cool old log cabin and uh, there's a foot trail here as well. And I'm gonna bet the farm that this foot trail goes about a mile or more through the bush to Fairchild Lake. But look at this cool cabin. Cabins here, they don't decay as quickly because it's so cold all the time. But you can see how this is just chinked with just moss. 
and the, the roof is just logs like this with a tarp and then the moss basically holds the tarp in place oftentimes just birch bark was used but this one obviously hasn't been changed for a while considering there's full trees growing out of it i wonder what uh the person who owns this cabin or who owned this cabin use it for i'm betting that the trail here goes right into fairchild lake maybe if i'd known that i would have I would have gone because there's a trail. I wouldn't have to follow the creek or compass bearing bushwhack in, but uh, yeah, someone picked a hell of a nice spot here too. Not far from a big, beautiful lake and uh, incredible, incredible view. Look at this. Looks like the uh, roof still doesn't leak too much logs are squared on the inside here and you can really see the the moss and uh some interesting literature to uh some thumb through here a little scotch the good thing about uh small cabins is it doesn't take much to heat and you can see this is a relatively small wood stove a top loader yeah i wonder how old this cabin is it's used for trapping or prospecting or hunting cabin or I always find it interesting to imagine what the people who called this cabin home what their lives must have been like what they're doing and just uh kind of always envision myself um doing something like that and I suppose I do to an extent but uh yeah I'm sure um you know whoever's the last person to use this cabin is likely still alive. It'd be cool to uh, have a chat with them for sure. Well, that was really cool. Just uh, fly fishing there at Fairchild Creek and then out of the corner of my eye, saw this awesome rustic old log cabin with a moss roof and uh, found what is likely a trail into Fairchild. It's too bad that uh, I didn't have more time to spend here because uh, I would have definitely trekked into that big beautiful lake just back in the bush this way but uh, still got to bang off 12k and it's like quarter to eight and uh, a couple big days coming up tomorrow too so probably for the best that uh, probably for the best that I'm going to uh, take a little more easy today. Looks like some clear water in that branch. That would have been the spot to fish, damn. But then I never would have saw the cabin, so all good. Pulling up to a potential campsite on a tributary with a beautiful pointy top mountain across the river. I'm off my map, so if I continue on, I'm gonna have to switch the maps over anyway. But... We've got some beautiful surroundings here and a nice clear water creek. So not a bad spot for a campsite, but it's a little low lying and sandy. You can tell most of it, at least the lower part, has uh, wasn't long ago when it was underwater. So not ideal, but it's flat and I didn't roll into camp until like 10 o'clock. So I'll take it. Looks like the weather's changing. There's some storm clouds rolling in. So I'm gonna get my tent up quick. I think it's gonna be a can of soup night. I brought a big can of um, pea soup that I might heat up and go to bed so I don't get to bed at like 2 in the morning getting to camp so late. And then that way I'll be able to get a, or an earlier start because I really got to make some distance tomorrow.
Wait, we should have staked it down first. Love this uh, folding saw. It's a Boreal 21 inch by Agawa Canyon. Look at that. Folds up so nicely. And with the uh, blade I have on here meant for cutting drywood, it just lasers through stuff. So much faster and easier to get a fire going with it. Wind keeps blowing up my fire. We needed some sort of wind break because I don't really have any tinder, and the wind just kept blowing out uh, the flame before it could get started. You've heard of a log cabin, you've heard of a teepee fire. Well, this is a lean to fire. Amazingly, it's just raining all around me, literally, except on top of that mount, like pretty much raining all around me except on me, so pretty ballsy once again, not putting my tarp up, but no risk, no reward. That is one hell of a view, that mountain, man. So freaking cool. Like it's just right there, right on the other side of the river. Absolutely gorgeous. There it is, habitant, soup au pois, avec jambon fume. That means rural people's pea soup with smoked ham. And I bring one along for nights like this where I don't feel like cooking and I gotta eat something quick and get to bed because I'm already exhausted. against bringing cans into the Canadian wilderness. This is not a park. All you camp counselor dweebs out there, okay? Really pushing my luck here, not setting a tarp up. Like it's raining like 50 meters away from me. Day seven today. Pretty epic freaking day. Traveled 40K after trekking up a Russian Creek into the mountains and up to a canyon, panning for gold. Found what I consider to be a gigantic gold nugget. Caught some Arctic grayling on the fly and uh, saw one doll sheep up pretty close and another four or so up in the mountains too and just took in endless amounts of beautiful country. I have um, 45K a day to do just to get to the peel. And then probably about 20 clicks on the peel to my float plane pickup spot at Taco Bar. I mean, I should be doing about 50K tomorrow, which I think is doable if conditions are like this, but it's not gonna be easy. Considering I didn't get to camp until about 10, and now it's probably after midnight. It's gonna be hard to drag 
collapse out of bed at 6 and 6 a.m. but it's got to happen well feeling some raindrops we've really pushed the envelope this time I'm just gonna finish up this pea soup and crawl into the tent and sleep hard I'll probably pass out in the first 10 seconds of lying down Dinner for tonight, awesome.